Welcome back, friends, to Write, the Universe, and Everything. In today's video, we're going to cover the eight most common problems that keep a good idea from becoming a great essay. Most of these will have individual videos dedicated to them later, but let's do a quick overview today. Coming in at number eight, we have losing easy points by missing basic formatting. These include things like misspelling your instructor's name or calling them Mrs. or Mr. instead of doctor. No title, no page numbers, or other formatting issues like spacing, margins, or forgetting to add a works cited page or parenthetical citations. I've seen papers go from an A to a C plus on these kinds of errors alone. Coming in at number seven is proofread. Oh, wait, just a second. There we go, proofreading. One major problem I see in writing is not necessarily forgetting to proofread, but because of doing it the wrong way. First of all, don't proofread immediately after finishing a paper. Cognitively speaking, most writers don't read what's on the page, but rather what they think they wrote in their head. That makes it hard to pick up problems like spelling, grammar, and mechanics. You should always try to wait at least 24 hours between finishing a draft and proofreading so that you forget what you wrote enough to actually read what's on the page. Secondly, you need to proofread a paper version of your essay and not on the computer screen. Scientifically speaking, things like iSkip are a bigger problem for digital screens, and comprehension also decreases with longer text on a screen. That's not a great combination for picking out tiny details. Third, you need to keep your eyes on what you're reading right at that moment, and the easiest way to do this is to cover up the page so that only one line at a time is visible. And finally, read your draft aloud. It feels weird, I know, but your ear knows what sounds off even if you don't know the names of all your grammar rules. If you feel yourself stumble a bit on a sentence while reading it aloud, it's probably awkwardly worded and needs revised. At number six, we have broken roadmaps, or to explain it another way, getting your audience lost on the way to your conclusion. An argument is a verbal journey, and it's up to you to make sure the audience doesn't get lost on the way. A good writer makes it clear where the argument is going to go by using the introduction to lay out the roadmap, verbal cues, and logical organization. Always outline your paper, either before your draft or after your first draft, and make sure that the order of points makes sense. Check your paragraphs to make sure that each one only covers one idea, and make especially sure to use transition words and phrases to let your reader know when you switch topics or you use a different rhetorical move. At number five is the headless essay, or writing that lacks a substantial introduction. An argument without a head really doesn't explain where it's going or why, so the reader doesn't understand the direction of the argument, the context, or what's at stake. When you make any extended argument, say, longer than a page, it should always start with explaining the context of your own argument, the thesis statement, and give a short introduction of how the argument will be ordered. At number four is the tendency to give insufficient explanation of your ideas and reasoning. Not only does this make your paper hard to understand, it can also lead to problems with flow and essays that don't meet the word limit. Usually, the problem is that it feels like overkill to explain all this to your reader, but remember that your audience hasn't done all the research and written the paper and you have. Number three is an academic deal breaker, evidence. Academic writing is based on claims supported by research. If you're missing one or the other, your work isn't going to fare well. The most common problems in undergraduate papers are insufficient quality evidence or documentation of that evidence. Remember to use enough sources to demonstrate what the entire conversation looks like and make sure that they're quality. Remember that every time you reference somebody else's ideas, you have to give them credit by name, either in your text or after the text in a citation. And if you use any sources, add a works cited or bibliography page in the format that your discipline requires. 
At number two, we have another academic deal breaker. No thesis statement or other important claims. Remember that academic writing aims to solve a problem and is claims driven, so a missing thesis statement will derail your argument entirely. Be sure to spell out your thesis statement in both your intro and your conclusion. Remember that every paragraph should also argue a point that helps support your thesis, and that point needs explicitly stated early on in every paragraph. This one is number one because it leads to almost every other problem on the list. If there's one thing that will lead to mistakes number two through eight, it's waiting until you only have one shot to get the drafting, revising, and editing done before you hit the finish line. If you get lost in the weeds, you're sunk. If you can't find the sources you need, you're doomed. Things like incomplete reasoning, missing roadmaps, and insufficient evidence are a common side effect of not having enough time to plan and revise. If you need help and you wait until the last minute, you may not have enough time. So get into prayer writing early so that your ideas have time to develop. Take several days on your first draft to work out where you want to go on the page. This is also a really common factor for plagiarism. Panicking when you realize that you're in over your head, but it's too late to ask for help for an extension. Starting earlier gives you the option of getting help before you're tempted to do something rash. All right, that does it for our top eight essay problems. For today's dirty little writing secret, try using your assignment sheet to make a checklist of the required elements in your paper. Things like the format, the number of sources, rhetorical moves, and goals. You can run through that checklist before turning in your essay to make sure that you're not missing critical components that will lower your grade. All right, I'll catch you in the next video.